I'll show you some examples of how to use Affinity Photo's Displace filter, which allows you to displace pixels based on a displacement map. This map can either be an external bitmap file or can be created from existing layers in the document. For the first example, I've got a composition here and I'll just show this text layer. I've already set its blend mode to overlay, but I also want the text to look like it's being affected by the movement of the water, which the displace filter will be ideal for. Now, rather than applying this filter destructively, by going to Filters, Distort, and Displace, I'll instead go to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, Distort, and Displace. This adds the filter as a live layer, allowing us to displace the text non-destructively. On the dialog, I'll click Load Map from Layers Beneath, which will create a displacement map from the layer content underneath the text layer. Now I can use the Strength slider to control the amount of displacement using either positive values or negative values. There is also a Load Method dropdown. It defaults to a red-green channel offset method, but we can instead switch it to a Sobel operator. Then click Load Map from Layers Beneath again. Using a Sobel operator with a 3x3 kernel creates more of a pixel diffusion effect, and this is useful if you want the layer content to remain in the same location. I'll switch back to the red-green offset method and load the inferred map from Layers Beneath again. One of the benefits from adding the Displace filter as a live layer is that we can easily experiment with moving the displaced layer around. So I've closed the dialog and I'll select the Move tool using V on the keyboard. Then I'll select the text layer and I'll move it around on the document. So this now displaces in real time based on the content behind it. And because this is still an editable text layer, I can double click on it to edit the text. So I might delete the word loan, leaving me with just island. Then to quickly exit text editing, I can use the escape key once, then V for the move tool again. And I can experiment with layering the text over the island. I'll change the blend mode back to normal. And I also need to scale the text down slightly. The displacement effect is also far too strong now. Not a problem, I can easily click on the displacement layer thumbnail here to reopen the filter dialog. Then I'll reduce the strength until the effect looks more suitable. This looks okay so far, but if I zoom in, the displacement effect looks too sharp and crisp. So here is a useful tip. Select the parent layer, then go to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Then use a really small radius value, 0.1 or 0.2 should suffice. This just takes the sharpness away and helps the effect stand up to scrutiny when examined in close detail. Now I will show you some examples for loading in external displacement maps. This is where the displace filter can get really abstract and experimental, and is capable of producing some very interesting results. First, let's take a standard stock image of a light explosion or a flare. I've got some adjustment layers here, so I'll just select the background layer which contains the image information, then add a live displace filter to it. On the dialog, I'll choose Load Map from File, then browse to a folder that contains a curated set of displacement maps. You can download these from various locations, such as stock image sites, 3D modeling and texture sites, and other digital marketplaces. They are typically grayscale, but they don't have to be. If you specify a color bitmap image, Photo will simply perform a grayscale conversion when loading it. I'll choose this distortion effect to load it as a displacement map. As I start to increase the strength slider, this displacement ends up looking quite compelling. You'll notice that the pixel displacement has resulted in areas of the image rendering as alpha. To prevent this, you can enable Preserve Alpha on the dialog. 
Another benefit of adding this filter as a live layer means you can experiment with the blend mode as well. Using Lighten, for example, reveals some of the original image information, as well as the displaced effect. For now though, I'll stick to the normal blend mode. The scale to fit option is also worth experimenting with. By default, Affinity Photo will scale the displacement map non-proportionally to the bounds of the layer or document. Unchecking this will leave the displacement map at its default resolution. Be careful if the displacement map resolution is smaller than your layer or document resolution, since you will then see tiling where the map is repeated. This is more useful if the displacement map is larger than your document and you don't want it to be scaled down. I'll show you another example now, where the Sobel method for displacement may be preferable. I want to apply the displacement to the triangle here, so I'll select the triangle layer on the layers panel. Then once again, I will add a live displace filter. And before loading the external displacement map, I'll change the method to Sobel 3x3 intensity offset. And I'll load this displacement map. Now I can increase the strength and create a rippling effect on the triangle without changing its position. And that was a look at the displace filter. I would recommend using the live layer variant of the filter where possible since it opens up the possibilities of non-destructive editing and makes it easier to experiment with different displacement maps. Thank you for watching.